Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Vergosity Gaming. I am so glad you joined us today. Let's face it guys, I'm a Minecraft noob. I just don't have the 10 plus years experience that some of the experts do, but with just over a year of playing under my belt, I've managed to learn a thing or two, and today we're going to look at my most used redstone circuits. Now I don't take credit for any of these designs, and I'll give credit in the comments where I can, but these are some of the most basic concepts that you'll need to know if you want to have any hope of constructing any redstone projects past flipping a lever to turn on a light, which is really about as basic as it gets. This is a redstone lamp. This is redstone. This is a lever. This is a button. These are two popular ways to send the signal to your lamp. Flip the lever. Light goes on. Flip the lever back. Light goes off. Button. Hit the button, light goes on, the button depresses itself, light goes off. What a concept. Clocks. Redstone clocks are by far the most useful circuit in my world, and you can find them everywhere. So let's take a look at a few simple ones, starting off with the repeater torch clock. Flip this lever here, and you can see we get a pulse to that lamp instead of a steady output. You can adjust the length of this pulse by adjusting this repeater right here. Which leads us to the second design of the same concept, and you kind of need to know one thing to understand how these works. This is a redstone torch. The redstone torch is always powered by itself, but if you power the redstone torch, the torch will turn off. And that is basically how this works here. This redstone torch turns on, which powers this repeater, which sends the signal around, and this repeater sends the signal back into this block, which will unpower the torch. When that torch is unpowered, these repeaters get unpowered, this line gets unpowered, and this repeater becomes unpowered, which means the block can become powered again, and the torch will relight, and it will send its signal all the way around. And again, you can adjust the length of this by adjusting these repeaters. Now the nice thing about this design, it is expandable as far as the eye can see. And here you can see we have a whole bunch of repeaters in a row, and this will create a nice long pulse for us as the signal works itself all the way back and around and clicks the lamp off one more time. From very long to very short, here we have the observer-based clock. Basically, when two observers are firing into each other, they create a very short and fast pulse as you can see here. Now this sort of thing is perfect for moving items around. Back here we have a dropper that is connected to a comparator. As soon as there is an item inside of the dropper, the comparator will pick up the signal, which will power this piston and push this observer over, causing these observers to form that clock and fire anything that is in the dispenser out. Now ideally these would be sending the item somewhere through a water stream, but that's just too fun to watch like that. And then from extremely short to extremely long and highly customizable, the Ethos Hopper Timer, and there will definitely be a link for this down in the description. Here we have a timer that is set by the amount of items in the hopper. Want more time? Just add more items. And here's how this works, but first know that items will flow back and forth as long as two hoppers are facing into each other. When the redstone block is next to this hopper, this hopper is locked and items cannot flow. What's going to happen when we turn it on is this sticky piston is going to cause this redstone block to pull back to here, which is going to unlock this hopper. Then items will start flowing from this hopper into this hopper. When this hopper is empty, this comparator will depower, which will unpower this sticky piston and will pull the redstone block back over, at which point items can start flowing from this hopper into this hopper. Then this one will become empty, this comparator will depower, and the sticky piston will pull the redstone block back over again. So let's just take a look at it and see see it in action here. You can see the items flowing from one side to the other. As soon as this hopper is empty, that redstone block gets pulled back over, which allows the items to flow back the other direction, and it just keeps going around and around and around. This is an amazing, amazing timer. Next, we're going to look at some pulse extenders and timers, and these would be extremely useful in your base if you wanted to have a door open for a little bit longer than just the pr button press would allow. You could introduce something like this. Now, this is going to look very similar to the Ethos Hopper Timer, and that's because it is very similar. The only difference is we've replaced this sticky piston with a regular piston so that the redstone block does not get pulled back, and it will wait for a new input. So if we click this input here, you can see everything works just like the Ethos Hopper Timer. The block slides back. But when this piston retracts, it will not pull the block back. So the timer stops and it will wait for another input from us to activate it again. Now there's other ways to go about this. Here is a comparator pulse extender. Now for example, we've got on the left side just what the regular pulse would be, and on the right side we've got the pulse going through the pulse extender. So if we hit the button, you can see it stays on a little bit longer. Nice thing about this one is we can expand this super easy just by adding more comparators right there. 
and see the pulse is just a little bit longer. Next, let's talk about the monostable circuit. And we're starting to get a little bit more technical here, but it's not anything too bad. Basically, what you need to know is that a monostable circuit will change a steady signal to a pulse output. Before we had the lever, when we flipped on the lever, it powered the lamp right away and left it on. Now, we get a nice little pulse, as opposed to a steady signal. This is super simple how this works. There's a dropper right here. When you power this lever, the dropper will fire its item up into the hopper. The hopper will pick up the signal through this comparator and output it for you. And then the hopper will drop the item back down into the dropper because it is not locked. Here is another monostable circuit. I believe this one was made by Mumbo Jumbo, so I am going to link him in the description. But I'm not sure if he was the one that invented it, but that is definitely where I saw it. But you can see, same kind of idea. Takes a steady signal and outputs a pulse. This is the T flip flop. It's basically the opposite of the monostable circuit. It will change a single pulse into a steady output for you. And before we look at it, we need to learn how a key concept works over here with pistons. When pistons are hit with a one tick pulse, they will spit their block out and not pull it back. So this is an observer. Anytime an observer is activated, it will output a one tick pulse. So we're going to activate it and watch what happens with this piston. It's going to spit its block out as opposed to pulling it back. So this is a key concept that is all over the world of Minecraft and comes into play in our first T flip flop here. We're going to hit this button which is going to power the repeater. The signal is going to go through this block, into this repeater, into this piston, which is going to extend. But we also have this piston here. And when this repeater is activated, this piston also gets activated. So there's only a very, very short amount of time for the signal strength to flow through here and it is exactly one tick of signal strength, which means this piston's gonna hit with one tick, which means it's going to spit its block out instead of retracting it. And that's gonna happen each time we press the button. Let's go ahead and hit it here. Keep an eye on this repeater right here and watch how short that pulse is going through it. See, it's just one tick, which allows that piston to spit its block out and then retract it the next time. And just for example, we're going to add one more tick of delay here, just so you can see what happens if we have two ticks of delay. It just comes right back. It doesn't spit it out, so now it basically just acts like a button, and this is just basically a useless contraption then, because we could just have a button. But, yeah, this, um, this one tick piston mechanic comes into play. I mean, this is simply lighting a light here, but it is all over contraptions all throughout Minecraft. Now the next one we have here is a dropper hopper T flip flop. There's a single item in this dropper and this comparator will pull that signal strength from there and output it. When we hit this button, this item is going to leave that dropper, going to flow up to here, turn the light off. When we hit the button again, that item is going to flow back into this dropper, repowering this comparator and sending the signal strength out. The last one we have is an observer based T flip flop. Now this is going to, when we hit the button, it's going to extend this piston out. And when it comes back, this observer is going to one tick fire that piston, which is going to do the same kind of thing, is going to spit its block back and forth. Yeah, so this is a huge concept in the game, guys. This one tick piston mechanic, you definitely need to learn how to manipulate this to be able to build good contraptions. The block swapper. Now, I don't know if this one is much of a circuit as it is a contraption, but I use this in my base all over the place to trade out walls with crafting tables to move various blocks around. And this one is just super simple and very self-explanatory about what it does. It just swaps these two blocks back and forth. Okay, we're about to get a little more scientific and a little more technical here, but we're coming across the zero tick piston generator. And this is built exactly one time in my base, but it's probably my most used machine. I use it to make concrete. And if anybody's seen my world, you know I build with a lot of concrete. This thing is absolutely amazing. It is a way to super effectively and super quickly shift blocks across and around in your world. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to put a block here. This redstone torch is going to power that block, which is going to power this 
redstone line up to here and will power this top piston. Then through quasi connectivity, it will power the bottom piston. That piston will push these blocks across and then it's going to end up over here where the same kind of thing is going to happen. A block is going to be right here. Uh, this redstone line will fire through here, triggering this, triggering that and triggering this piston, which then through quasi connectivity. And I can't believe I just said that twice will power the bottom piston. So it is extremely fast, extremely useful. And we'll do some examples here and we'll just try to get it going and get it firing. And there we go. Yeah, guys, this is how you move blocks. This is how you move blocks very effectively around your base. Look how fast that is. The last thing we're going to look at, guys, is flying machines. These help me farm crops. I just built a huge one in my kelp farm. There's one in my bamboo farm, and they are solely responsible for helping me make the perimeter on the double witch hut farm that we have. Basically, these are pretty easy too. The observer is triggered, which fires this piston, which triggers this observer, which fires this piston, and the blocks below it, the honey blocks, I'll stick to them and get pulled with it. So it is quite a little contraption. Look at that back and then over again. We'll do one more time. Beautiful. Well, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks for checking out some redstone basics with me. Shortly, we'll be doing an episode on my most used contraptions, and we'll actually put a bunch of these circuits to use. As always, subscribe, like, leave a comment, and let me know what you think. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.